Get ready for that football show with those fantasy guys. Hello and welcome to week number three of that football show with those fantasy guys. And we are those fantasy guys. Jay, last week, to use a football term, we batted a thousand. And this week, we're going to do it again. We are hitting on all cylinders coming into week three. And here we go for you fantasy junkies. Jay, hashtag trending. Lay some knowledge on us. I'm going a little bit outside the fantasy football box. I'm comfortable in the fantasy football box, and I'm also comfortable in the NFL football box. And you're going to hear something here first on TFS that you're not going to hear anything else. So get ready. Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't know if it's going to happen at the trading deadline. I don't know if it's going to happen in the offseason. But I'm telling you where he's going to go right here, right now. Listen up. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to get traded to the Chicago Bears at some point in time. I don't know about that. I'll tell you number one. He might die in New England. (laughs) Jay Cutler. This is the last year of his guaranteed money. They can cut him free at no cost after this year. Number two, the Pats and the Bears held joint practices this offseason. So the Bears coaching staff, the Bears brass, all the people that need to know to make this trade happen, saw Jimmy G in extensive work, not just uh, pre-game warm-ups. They saw him in extensive practices. Number three, the Bears and the Pats have a history of trading. Where do you think Marcellus Bennett came from? The Chicago point. Bears. So They've had four trades in the past two seasons between the Bears and the Patriots. So the lines of communication are wide open. And let me tell you what, the NFL sandbox, the Patriot sandbox is not big enough for Brady and Garoppolo for the next couple of years. The value is at, gonna be at the highest this off season or at the trading deadline. And by the way, do you know where Jimmy Garoppolo is from? Uh, Chicago. Northern Illinois College. <laughs> it's close. It all comes together. You heard it here first. Jimmy Garoppolo to the Chicago Bears. Trading deadline, off season. Mark the tape. Come back and say good call, Jay. Something to look forward to, I guess, if you are a Bears fan. Let's move on to key injuries, Jay. An unbelievable week two in the NFL. The injuries have started. Doc piled. Look at that graphic. The screen isn't big enough for that graphic. We got Jay Cutler, as you mentioned, Josh McCown, Adrian Peterson on IR, Doug Martin, Amir Abdul on IR, Danny Woodhead, Rashad Jennings, and half of the backs in the NFL, bunch of wide receivers, all of the Jets wide receivers, a couple tight ends. Jay, who's jumping off at you? Clearly the IR guys, but who else? I mean, being a Bucks fan, Doug Martin, I think this is going to give a chance for Chris Sims to show his the value. The underwhelming Chris the Sims. The underwhelming Chris Sims on the underwhelming Bucks. <laughs> but the one that really jumps out to me, of course, is, you know, Gronk. Gronk still on the list because he hasn't played yet. What do you do if you have any of these players? You stay tuned because we're going to take care of everything starting right now. Let's move into sneaky starts. As I mentioned, we batted a thousand last week, Jay, and we got off to a hot start. And Jay, who did you have for your sneaky start? Last week, everybody was rushing to sign, pay Eli, for Eli, Eli, Rogers. Eli Rogers. That's right. Everybody, uh, you said he had all I, the targets I last did. He week, had all the and targets. I told you the numbers he, added up. I told you the size. The speed and the big playability of Sammy Coates was the guy to sign. Eli Rogers? We need a bell. Ding, 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 ding. ding. One catch for nine yards. Sammy Coates doubled him up with two catches, but I don't even know the math on the 97 yards. I guess that's 10 times as many yards. There's a whole bunch of them right here. Wow. And we even got one in the actual game for me. (laughs) Ding, 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 ding. Keep feeding that boy. He's going to be the number two wide receiver from here on out. Martavius Bryant ain't coming back this year. So there's nothing but upside with Sammy Coates. If you played him last week, okay, he didn't get you a touchdown, but he almost got you 100 yards. Most leagues yards count. And those numbers are going to go up as Ben Roethlisberger earns, uh, or as Sammy Coates earns the trust of Ben Roethlisberger. Absolutely. 
Now, Jay, last week I gave you a wide receiver who was also a home ding, run ding, hitter. Ding, 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 Mike Wallace was four catches for 41 yards and two <laughs> touchdowns. Big guy. And, you know, last week we were just, we were just dead on. And there's nothing else to be said about that. Clearly the number one wide receiver for big arm quarterback, Joe Flacco. Wallace can be started from here on out as a flex option. And this week, he gets a Jacksonville defense that has allowed <laughs> six passing touchdowns in two weeks. Feel confident in Mike Wallace, and you're welcome. How can we possibly follow up those two amazing picks? Jay's going to tell us. Well, I'll tell you what. You just showed a highlight of Mike Wallace, and I just noticed that highlight was against the Buffalo Bills. It was. Well, I'm going to pick out another guy that's going to play against the Buffalo Bills because it is a hot mess up in northern <laughs> New York. Rex Ryan, the, the team is having offensive meetings with the owner, or the, the owner of the team and the owner of the team's wife without Rex Ryan being in there. If you don't think there's problems up in Buffalo, you are crazy. Buffalo is about to implode, and you know who's about to explode is Jerron Brown, wide receiver, Arizona Cardinals. I'm going a little deep. I know we've talked about John Brown a lot on TFS, but I'm digging a little bit deeper, and I'm going with Jerron Brown, who had just as many plays from scrimmage as John Brown since the beginning of the season, but he's doing more with the plays. And the more he does with the plays, the more he's going to get trusted by Carson Palmer. And at this point in time, he's what, the third, the fourth receiver? You still have to worry about Larry Fitzgerald. You still have to worry about this one. Eight angels wonder. Um, you still have to worry about all the receivers that they have and the one guy that's going to be able to sneak in there and line up against your fourth wide receiver and be wide open. Jerron Brown, start him with confidence in your flex this week. So when I saw him on our roster this week, I thought it said John Brown because I read it quick and I saw Arizona. Uh, what do you think the odds are that when they call for Brown, he pushes John Brown in the dirt and runs out on the field? Oh, the chances are very good <laughs> if he wants to keep his job, but he better do that quick because he's about to lose it. All right. This week, I've got a name for you, and it comes from New York as I well. I can't wait to hear the pronunciation. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> Quincy a Anunua. You got it! Bam! And you know who you should get is Quincy Anunua. For anybody who saw that Thursday night game, I don't need to tell you that he was targeted six times, caught all six balls for 92 yards before leaving with a rib injury. Now, this week, this week, Brandon Marshall sits. You heard it here first on TFF. It's Wednesday night when we shoot this show. As of right now, he's questionable. I'm telling you, Brandon Marshall sits down. When he sits down, Anunwa steps into the second wide receiver position on that team, and he's going to get every opportunity from Fitzpatrick because Fitzpatrick has a ton of trust in him. How do I know? Because they've thrown to him 15 times. You know how many he's caught? 14. He dropped one. Oh. But, but that's a pretty good percentage rate for balls caught when thrown to you. He also has a touchdown, 148 yards in two games. He would have gone over 100 yards against that Bills defense if he didn't get hurt. And he's definitely going to go over 100 yards this week. He is – go ahead. I was going to say, I don't have the stats on that game. But I I'm a big fan of the eyeball test. I know there's a lot of metrics, people. Go. I like the eyeball Let's test. And the best receiver I saw on the field for the Jets in that game was Anunwa. Six without for a doubt. six. Yeah. Six for six. And he's a big guy. He's a, he looks like Brandon Marshall. He's going to fill in nicely for him. I mean, take a look at this crap. Oh, my. He's winning the one-on-one. -on -one. He, I mean, he's just – what else can I say? Quincy Anunwa. And, and by the way, while we're on the topic of uh, – our picks from last week. While preparing for the show, I happened to peruse a couple fantasy websites, and I don't want to mention any names or <laughs> NFL, but um, they're suggesting that you should go out and pick up Sammy Coates and Mike Wallace. Wow, imagine that. Imagine that. If someone watched this show, they'd already have them. Yeah, it's a lot easier to get them before they go off. It's a lot easier to get them before they go off. I agree. Thank you. That's what we say. We let you know when they're about to go off so you can snatch them up cheap. Righto. We digress to tough sets. Sit down, Waldo. My tough sit last week, I said, 
The guy I would have drafted number one overall in any format, in any league. The guy I would have drafted first, second, or third if I had any one of those picks. Todd Gurley. Mm. Sit him down. It's tough for me to say because I told you about Todd Gurley when he was in college. I know in your one of your leagues you have Todd Gurley because I told you about him. But if I had him, I would have sat him. Did you sit him? No. Did you win your game? No. Should have watched that fantasy <laughs> show with those football guys. Should have taken your advice, Jay, uh, because he had a very bad day. 51 carries for Todd Gurley. 51 yards. 51 yards. He might have, it might have been on 51 <laughs> carries. I think he's got 51 <laughs> carries on the season, but 51 yards. Uh, I will tell you, I saw an interesting stat. Todd Gurley has the most broken tackles in the NFL so far for a, fantasy, for a running back. Um, so going forward, I think it's a good opportunity to buy Todd Gurley low. If you have a, an owner who's 0-2 at this point because of Todd Gurley, may be frustrated by Todd Gurley, this week he gets Tampa Bay, and I think he has a chance to get up good on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the first time this season. Well, I don't like to hear that at all because the Bucks are my team, as everybody knows. But number two, let me ask you this. Um, you, as a Todd Gurley owner, yes. you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Thanks, what Thanks would, for, the, for the no score so far. <laughs> what would it take to get Todd Gurley from you? Tell the well, people, as a Todd Gurley owner, you just said maybe there are buy low possibilities. What would you consider fair market value for Todd Gurley? Uh, what I would consider fair market uh, value to for you. Todd like, Gurley. What would you consider so, accepting? Well, for me, it would be difficult because the league I own him in is a keeper league. So I have to look beyond just this year. Okay. Um, I also think that Todd Gurley is going to get it turned around eventually. What I'm telling our viewers is if you have an opportunity by someone who's very frustrated by Todd Gurley and who is trying to move him out the door, then you could absolutely snag him for a running back who has come out big in the beginning part of the season but maybe died off. Maybe you have... Um, you know, uh, you put me on the spot here. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe if you have uh, Jamal Charles and, and the backup Spencer Ware who's doing great things, maybe you could package those two guys and get Todd Gurley easily. I think you could probably pull that one off because if you can package those two guys, when Jamal Charles comes back, it's very unclear what the split is going to be. And to the owner who has Todd Gurley, he's getting the guy who's playing now and he's getting the guy who's coming back. So theoretically, he should get the guy, but there is a possibility that once Jamal Charles comes back that, you know, Ware doesn't leave the field. So I think that if you can, if you can, if you can offer the owner points, the, if you can offer the Todd Gurley owner points, that it would be hard for him to refuse that, especially in a redraft league. What about Ryan Matthews for Todd Gurley? Ryan Matthews has three touchdowns through two games. I think that that's a fair offer. I'm offering him to you for Todd Gurley right now. <laughs> live, live on television. <laughs> Not in a keeper league. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for the offer. All right. If, if we were a redraft league, that is a very enticing offer. Okay. Uh, let's move on to my tough sit last week was Carlos Hyde. Carlos Hyde had 13 carries for 34 yards and a fumble. He was almost going backwards last week. Now, last week, I, I, I want to talk about something other than, than uh, Carlos Hyde. I really, really wanted to sit down Drew Brees last week. But I took the safe pick because I didn't want to be wrong for you, the viewers, and I went with Carlos Hyde. Now, Carlos Hyde is a great sell high candidate after week one. And after week two, his value came down. Obviously. As we mentioned last week, his value was at the highest after week one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, I want to apologize to our viewers personally for not telling you to sell high on Carlos Hyde, even though you did mention it. We didn't emphasize it, and we should have, and I'm going to commit to our viewers right now that we will never miss another opportunity for you to rake someone over the coals in your league. So from this point forward, our sell highs will be spot on. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Let's move on to this week, Jay. How do you follow up such a performance? This week on My Tough Sit, I'm going to go right at you again. I know I'm going after somebody you really like, but this week I'm saying after his performance on Monday Night Football, My Tough Sit is Stephon Diggs. Because after nine catches, 182 yards, and a touchdown, how can you possibly sit this guy? Well, let me tell you what. Number one, going against Carolina. 
Yeah, they lost Josh Norman, but their defense is still nasty. And after AP went down, he's all they got on offense. Oh yeah, by the way, they have wonder boy Sam Bradford. He's now the starting quarterback. Look great. He almost left the game with a broken hand, number one. Number two, what's the over under on his next injury? Three quarters? I mean, so what are you going to have then? You're going to have... You're going to have the, the, the pizza guy throwing them balls. I mean, if you have the opportunity, if you have another wide receiver, don't think that nine catches, 182 yards, got to start them. You don't. Think about it. It goes a little bit beyond the eye test. It's the eye and the common sense test. Well, I apparently have no common sense because uh, any longtime viewer of this show knows that I am a fan of Sam Bradford. Fanboy. I- I, I like the way that he throws the football. I think he can make all of the NFL throws, and he's looked good so far uh, for the Minnesota Vikings. Now, Stephon Diggs was a man crush at first sight for me. <laughs> I love the way that this kid snatches the ball out of the air. You it's everything I look for in a fantasy wide receiver. He competes, and he wins for the ball. Now, number two. As you mentioned, he's on a team that just lost Adrian Peterson, one of the better backs in the NFL, and they're going to start a couple guys who were really unproven. Uh, We're going to get into it a little bit later. I think they don't have any other choice but to throw the ball to Stephon Diggs. I think that this week he doesn't get 180 yards, but he gets in the neighborhood of 50 to 75, and he gets into the house because they're going to be playing from behind and they're going to have to throw the ball. They're not going to be able to run on the Carolina Panthers. I think he's not a terrible option this week. So for the first time this season, Jay? Head to head. We disagree. We're going head to head. (laughs) Now, let's move on to my pick for this week. As I mentioned previously, I took Carlos Hyde, and the guy I really wanted was Drew Brees, and he had a tough week because he was playing outside in the rain in New York, and my gut told me to take that. And I didn't listen to it. This week, I'm listening to my gut. What's your gut telling you? This week, I did some homework on some stats. And my tough sit is Ben Roethlisberger. Wow, that's aggressive. Ben Roethlisberger, through two games, has 559 yards and six touchdowns. Those are juicy numbers. That is a guy you must start, but not this week. And here's why. Clean out your earwax because I'm going to drop some stats on you. He's playing the Philadelphia Eagles this week. And you might say, so what? So what? It's the Philadelphia Eagles. It's the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I got some news for you. The Philadelphia Eagles have allowed zero passing touchdowns this season and a scant 280 yards passing through two games. Now, I will give you that they've only played terrible quarterbacks. One of them being Jay Cutler last week who got hurt. However, if you go into this game expecting Ben Roethlisberger to throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns, you will be severely disappointed. I think they hold him under 300, and I think he throws 1.5 touchdowns. That's a possibility for two, but more likely for one. This is going to be a fist fight in Philly, and Ben Roethlisberger is going to be on the wrong side. Oh, we're going head-to-head two times now because <laughs> there is no way you said Ben Roethlisberger. He's guaranteed for over 300 yards and more probable than not three touchdowns. Full stride in week three on disagreements. Uh, you know, the way I look at it is we had such a good week last week. I can go out on a limb, and I feel like I'll get a little bit of uh, slack from the audience if oh, I happen yes. to be wrong. You might happen to be. Let's move on to Wall Street, Jay. Buy low, sell high. What do you got for us this week? We're Wall Street. Ding, 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 <laughs> ding, 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 Wall Street. we got to get a bell. Sell <laughs> high, sell high, sell high. Matt Forte, Matt Forte. Matt Forte. Disagree. Three touchdowns in the game against the aforementioned terrible Buffalo Bills. Find a guy that likes old running backs. Find a guy that has Adrian Peterson, for instance. In the fantasy football playoffs, you will get at least as much production from AP as you will from Matt Forte, and AP might not actually be playing. (laughs) All right? So look for the guy that has AP and try and sell Matt Forte to him because Matt Forte is over 30. He's on a decent team, but they are clearly riding him until his legs fall off. Absolutely. And his legs 
are going to fall off. And then what do you got? You got a Jets running back. What does that get you? <laughs> Squat. Get rid of him while you can. He doesn't play the Bills every week. He gets them one more time, but he doesn't get them every week. I agree that you should sell high, just not this week. As we just mentioned, we want to help you rake every other owner in your league over the coals. Matt Forte. Doing that this week, trading him this week, doesn't do that because it gives them a good option this week. You want to do it after next week. This week he gets the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs are ranked 30th in the NFL against the run. The Jets, all three of their top wide receivers are hurt. One of them probably isn't going to play. They're going to pound the ball against Kansas City. He's going to go over 100. He's going to get a touchdown. <laughs> and I think that next week is the week that you trade Matt Forte away. So you think trading him after 100 yards and one touchdown is better than trading him after three touchdowns? No. I think that trading him after 200 yards and four touchdowns over two weeks is better than trading him after 100 yards and three touchdowns All because right. it shows some consistency and I think you'll get more for him next week. That is possible. But what if the people out there that you are competing against are looking and salivating at all time for your of the injuries situations. at running back and trying to pick up running backs when you can say, you don't need to pick up a running back. I can give you an established running back who scores three touchdowns. I know that you get all worked up and you forget that we're on television, but we have a timeline to hit here. We so, haven't even been close in two weeks. <laughs> okay. So can we move on? Well, let's go. Here we go. All right, moving on. My buy low is a, a bevy of running backs. There are three guys that everybody in your fantasy football league is targeting this week. They are Fozzie Whitaker, J uh, Jarek McKinnon, and Matt Asiata. We have no clips of them because we're not talking about them. And let's pile one more on the underwhelming Charles Sims. The guys that we do have clips on, for, for starters, is these guys are guys that you can go out and you can add for a dollar. These are like first part of the season lottery tickets. You know about draft lottery tickets, right? Where you just draft a guy and you hope for the best. These guys you can add for a dollar, and there is a possibility that they will become a force on their football teams because of the injuries to Adrian Peterson, to Amir Abdullah, to Doug Martin, all the injuries that we've talked about already. These guys are lower on the depth chart, but in some places have more value because they have more talent than the guys in front of them. They are in no particular order. Kenyon Drake, running back for the Miami Dolphins, he has two carries for 12 yards and the all-important touchdown run inside the red zone. It shows that they, uh, they give him the... Uh, the, they trust him. They, thank you. They trust him in the red zone, which is a very important part of the football field, not only in fantasy, but in real football. And they are not impressed with Ajaya at all. In fact, he didn't even travel with the team in week one. So I think this is a guy that you can add for a dollar this week that has potential to pay long-term dividends. Now, Arian Foster has a hamstring. He'll probably come back for a game, and then he'll be gone again. That's and it's possible. Gonna, it's going to be that way all season long. <clears throat> I think Drake ends up the number two above Ajaya. Do you want to take the next one? Sure. We got going? Dwayne Washington. That's a good uh, one. He's got six carries for 32 yards and a touchdown. Uh, in case you didn't know, that's averaging over five yards a carry. Right Abdul on. is on IR. Riddick is more of a third down back. So the, the, the opportunity for the – Two downs, three down back is going to definitely be on Dwayne Washington. He has the opportunity to take over the lead back role Absolutely. and just roll from there. Absolutely. So Big um, kid, yeah. fast, and, and a, a dynamically different player than Riddick. Yep. Riddick is going to be the passing back. Yep. He's got all the talent in the world. Uh, Cameron Artis Payne. Whoo! He is zero <laughs> carries for zero yards this season. We are digging deep in week three. Uh, with Fozzie Whitaker just had a day at 16 rushing, uh, rushing attempts for 100 yards. But do you know why Fozzie, Fozzie Whitaker had a day and 16 rushes for 100 yards? Because Cameron Payne was on inactives. He's not going to be inactive this week. You're going to see a dynamic difference in that running game. I think Artis Payne out-touches Fozzie Whitaker this week. Again, the problem here is eventually Stewart will be back. But in the short term, 
this guy could have some real value for you. Okay, who else we got on Oh, this? we got Ronnie Hillman, a little guy you might have heard out of Denver that was released at Denver at the end of the year, but someone that has put up numbers, has put up stats, has been fantasy relevant, was just signed by the Minnesota today. Vikings today. So he's in line for, to be down the road uh, value. Probably not going to have value this week, maybe not next week, but down the road once he learns the offense and more importantly learns the blitz pickups, which is mm -hmm. something he had a problem with in Denver, which is why he always got passed over. But right now, if they're looking for just talent, and it's another thing, if you miss a blitz pickup, if Peyton Manning's not your quarterback, it might not be a big deal. But if you miss a blitz pickup and Peyton Manning's your quarterback, he looks at you and points you right off the field. <laughs> Sam Bradford doesn't ha quite have that cachet, so he might have a little bit more rope for the blitz pickups. But the thing is, he has the dynamic talent, the speed to get to the corner. He could be a big play guy. He might be the starter by the end of the year or by fantasy football playoffs. Yeah, I agree 100% on this one because the fact that they went out and added uh, a Ronnie Hillman tells me that they are not fully confident in Jared McKinnon. And Matt Asiata, let's face it, he is what he is. He's he's a running back in a fullback He's body. a fullback. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, and if you look back to 2014 when Adrian Peterson went down, uh, McKinnon was there and uh, Asiata was there. Asiata outplayed him 10 to 1. Uh, Asiata ended up with 10 touchdowns. He's probably going to be a goal line vulture again. But this guy, Hillman, has a real shot at, at overtaking both of them. And here is a different opportunity. This is a real lottery ticket because AP, you know, they say two months. AP might have played his last down. We talked about Minnesota. this. I'd be willing to bet that he's played his last down with his contract status, his injury status for the Minnesota Vikings. <clears throat> it's too bad that that's what his last carry was. Absolutely. We got one more for you. And this one hits home for you, my yeah, friend. Yeah, I skipped right over him. Jack Quez Rogers has two carries for 29 yards. Once a prospect for the Atlanta Falcons, now plays for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And the underwhelming Chris Sims is now Stop the it. only running back I had of him. Sick of hearing that. Chris Sims has done absolutely nothing aside from a week one touchdown when everybody on Tampa Bay scored a touchdown. <laughs> I think that Jacquez Rogers has a real opportunity here to overtake that number two position. Again, though, the problem here is that Doug Martin will be back. Doug Martin is the bell cow in Tampa Bay, and when he comes back, this guy goes back to the bench. But another lottery ticket in the short term here. Jay, let's put him in order of importance. Who do you have first? Dwayne Washington. I think he has the best shot of these guys to be a number one back. Absolutely, and we talked about the Lions. Um, looking for that 1,000-yard rusher, this could be the kid. I put Kenyon Drake second on this list just because uh, uh, Arian Foster, like we said, he's going to come back for a quarter and then miss another three games. And Ajaya it just hasn't gotten it done for, for Miami. Yeah, next I would say if we're going the lottery ticket route, lottery ticket. I would go with Ronnie Hillman. Ronnie I Hillman. think he's Ooh. the lottery ticket. He's the guy that has the chance to be the guy in the fantasy playoffs. I think the Minnesota Vikings have a nice defense that's going to put them in a position to be in games, and that will give Ronnie Hillman an opportunity to be a participant in the offense. I don't think they're going to put it all on Sam Bradford's shoulders. Number one, number two, Sam Bradford could get hurt, you know, falling out of bed. Um, so I think Ronnie Hillman has the chance to be your lottery ticket guy. Excellent. And let's round it off. Let's go uh, Cameron Artis Payne in the second position, just because, like I said, Jonathan Stewart will be back this season. And uh, let's, let's end it with Jacquez Rogers. Again, a lottery ticket because uh, Doug Martin comes back and he, he takes over the bell cow. So there we are, digging deep in week oh, number we were three. Digging. For you, for you we dig deep. Let's move on to the Facebook question. Skip that. We don't have time. Let's move on. Get rid of that. That was last oh, that week's was, question. That was 0 for 2 last week. <laughs> we're, we're, we're done with that. Jay, let's move on to weekly leagues and wrap this week up. Woo! Ding, 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 ding. Let's wrap it up. You want a lottery ticket for your weekly fantasy league? Willie Sneed. Not high priced. Playing against Atlanta. But here's the key. You know when the Saints go marching home? That's the only time they play well. The Saints right. are at home. They put up points. 
Oh, they, they, it's like a video game when they're at home and it's like a high school game when they're on the road. They're at home Monday night against Atlanta. Willie Sneed is the play because he's not going to cost you a lot against your cap, but you're going to get value out of the pick. I love it. That does it for week number three of that football show with those fantasy guys. And ding, 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 ding. We are those fantasy guys. We'll see you next week, everybody. Good luck and get yourself one of those lottery tickets if you have room.